All right, so in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to get a pixel perfect game set up in Unity, and uh, also in particular, getting a pixel perfect shmup uh, using Unity and my uh, projectile engine Vario Bullet 2D, which is primarily used for bullet hell, shmups, that kind of thing, but it also is definitely used for other game styles, and this tutorial will trans translate just as well to other game styles. But for the sake of how to handle projectiles, I'm going to look at that in specific and how to achieve nice, smooth, authentic kind of pixel perfect setup. As authentic as, you know, I think is reasonably expected nowadays. And so I'll look at some rule of thumbs and how to get it all set up in Unity and how to make use of certain things, features in Variable 2D. And hopefully that'll help you out. All right, so what even, for some of you out there, you may not even know what pixel perfect really even means, why it's important, or why it maybe isn't important, and every, you know, everybody might have their opinion on this, but uh, in general, I find that um, developers who want to do a pixel art game, and who kind of grew up with that style of gaming, they never really got comfortable with this, you know, trying to get that style of game on newer engines that maybe don't have all the you know, settings set up for that to look as authentic as it did on all that old hardware. And there are definitely definitely a lot of debates on how far you need to go with this. Um, but I don't want to get too much into that. But the very basic bare minimum is to have a pixel perfect snapping grid. So there's no misaligned uh, pixel blocks. And basically, you know, here I'll show you a little visual here. So what you see here is these, you know, consistent pixel blocks that you never have anything smaller than this little block size right here. And what can often be the case when you try to make your pixel art game in a newer engine like Unity is you'll see them shift over when you're moving transforms of game objects and the pixels just, they'll you know, line up incorrectly. And if you can't keep control of this and have, and you can't have it snapping on a pixel perfect grid, you know, people might notice that and it might look kind of weird. The motion might be a little too smooth. It, it kind of breaks a little bit of the, the nice sort of retro illusion. <laughs> and maybe worst of all is, as you can see here, I've got this sort of GIF showing the sort of before and after going from pixel perfect to not pixel perfect, which is sort of default in Unity. So this would be pixel perfect where you see these little blocks that nicely, especially on a rotated object, just nicely step down that angle. But if you don't if you're not snapping to a pixel grid, you get this, you know, sort of a ununiform rotated blocks. And you know, that can especially break the effect and the illusion. So for a long time in developing in Unity, this has been a big problem, a big headache for a lot of people, and there's been different solutions attempted, and a lot of people, including me, pulled out a lot of hair trying to figure this out, and I think finally it's been figured out, so that's one of the reasons for this video. Now, if, if this doesn't interest you, if you really don't care, then that's fine. You don't need to uh, do this if you don't, if it doesn't really bother you, but... This has everything to do with personal taste, really. I mean, here I'm looking at uh, probably what a lot of people would consider the pinnacle of pixel art by a lot of standards, uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And this game back in whatever it was, 1997, 1998, you see it, it's kind of blurry because it's taken from a, a blurry screenshot, but you can see the blocks are nicely lined up, nice, you know, pixel grid, everything's on a nice pixel grid, except for these elements right here these uh, sort of 3D rendered elements for some objects in the game where you see they're, they're rotated. And uh, actually, I did, didn't really even notice this, probably because there's only a few elements that did that in the game. I When I thought about the sword, I, I thought in my head, how did they do that? And I realized, oh, you know, they must have um, rendered this at a higher resolution, doing the 3D rendering, rotated them at that higher resolution, um, and then took the lower resolution... Uh, rest of the game and then upscaled it to whatever this resolution is at and you get this sort of mismatch but whatever it didn't seem to affect too many people's enjoyment of the game so I'm just throwing this out there to show how just goes to show that it's not necessarily a deal breaker if you don't get an exactly pixel perfect grid throughout your game uh, but this is sort of an edge case I would say so the very first thing to consider when trying to get this pixel perfect setup 
in your game is to think about the best resolution for your game. Um, for the destination resolution, most devices nowadays, the target resolution is about 1080p, right? And I know there's some odd resolution formats on smartphones and tablets, but even they can handle 1080p with some pretty decent scaling. You might get some uh, sort of stretching and compressing of the pixel uh, pixels if if you want it to be pixel perfect and it kind of ruins a little bit of it, you know, like if you try to use an emulator on a tablet and then you're playing like an old SNES game or something like that. And you might notice that some of the pixels are stretched at odd values. So that sort of breaks it a little bit on smartphones, but, and anyways, for, for this tutorial, I'm going to choose 1080p. And of course the game itself, if it's a pixel game, it's going to be at a, meant to be at a much lower resolution. That's then upscaled to 1080p. So, Another reason why I think 1080p is a really good resolution is because you could take 640 by 360, double it, and you've got 720p, and then or triple it, and you got 1080p. So you got these nice sort of uniform scaling uh, without any sort of stretching or resolution mismatch issues or anything like that. Or even if you want to go lower than 640, 360 as your base resolution uh, then of your in-game assets. Uh, 320, 180, that would be sort of like NES style, I guess 8-bit. So I think that's a good start. And if you, if you don't, if you, if you want a different viewport, you want to have like, say not uh, a widescreen for your game, you can, you can just fudge it. You can put black bars on the edges and, um, you know, that's what most games do these days. They just put black bars on the edges of the screen and you can put wallpaper there or, or, or nothing. And that's how you handle that. So before we get started in everything you need to get set up, I think a pr pretty good thing to do, although it's not necessary by any stretch, is to set up your snapping grid in Unity. So you go here to Edit, Grid, and Snap Settings, and set these all to 0.1 for uh, size, move, rotate is 1, scale 0.1, and set them to all axes. I think you might have to do this with every scene, or at least re-snap your elements uh, in every scene, if, if you want to. Um, but anyways, I found that's a good, nice rule of thumb. So what's good with setting the snapping up here like this... Oh, and if you go to... Um, yeah, you have to go to your scene view and go select the uh, transform tool here and make sure it's set to global here and the uh, magnet grid uh, icon is also selected and now what happens here if you look at the transform here when I move it around oops when I move it around it snaps to those 0.1 increments which I'll which will later be important to maintaining our pixel perfect setup so a nice little quick tip also on this is that you can click and drag and select a bunch of elements and hit control on win on windows hit control and control and backslash so if you hit control and backslash, that will give you the, uh, so you can select a bunch of elements and hit control and backslash and they'll all snap to the grid. This isn't absolutely necessary because, you know, this is just nice for setting up a scene uh, and kind of making sure everything's on the grid to begin with. But the pixel perfect component that we're going to be working with, it's going to just, it's going to snap everything uh, when you hit play. But just, this is to avoid any sort of potential issues where it actually snaps to uh, uh, say like you want a player to be on a platform and somehow you overlap the platform and it's snapped to below the platform that could happen so it's kind of nice to be snapped nice and clean in your scene view to start with so there's no surprises so that's why setting up the snapping is is worthwhile in my in my estimation all right so the main thing you're going to want to use here to get this whole thing going is the Pixel Perfect Camera Component. This is, I think, um, officially put out by Unity. I think it maybe even comes in standard uh, in the uh, with the components in 2020 and above, maybe. I don't know, don't quote me on that. But if not, you just download it. Yeah, just import it here. You'll see it's called 2D Pixel Perfect. Um, and this is a useful, definitely useful uh, web page to check out on the component and how to get things set up. A lot of what it talks about, I will go into in this video. So this might just be something added that you might want to look into.
And Pixel Perfect Camera is just a really simple component. The way you use it is just attach it to your main camera on every scene. And here in this scene, I have the Pixel Perfect Camera attached to my scene here. And it's really that that's all there is to it. You just have to then set up these uh, settings. So for me, I use a 10 PPU, a 10 pixel per unit setting in my games. The, the reason why I choose 10, some people choose 1. They think that this makes most sense for pixel games. Um, and the default is 100. The reason I choose 10 is like 1 in 100, it's very easy mathematically to work with. It's easy to multiply and divide. Uh, it's just really simple to get, you know, not some weird uh, numbers as a result of, you know, like if you use 16 or something like that. I'm not sure why people use those. Um, why I don't use one is because there's a little bit of confusion about this, but I've heard enough people say that there are troubles with the underlying physics engine. If you use a one pixel per unit, um, there's just some issues and errors and I don't know, I don't even want to have to deal with that. So anyways, I set everything to 10 as a default. That's what all my assets picture, uh, pixel per units are set to by default. Although there's going to be a, a special case scenario that I'll talk about here in a minute when dealing with projectiles. Um, my reference resolution, as I was saying earlier, 1080p is going to be the output output upscale sort of final result. So, so if you want your game to be at a sort of uh, a Super Nintendo or PlayStation pixel art sort of resolution, uh, divide that by three, and you got 640 by 360. And there's this upscale render texture setting as well as pixel snapping. Uh, for pixel snapping, is basically this is what snaps all of the different objects to a grid. And upscale render texture, that just makes sure everything is that chunky, blocky, uh, good pixel goodness sort of look to it, even if you have use really higher, much higher resolution assets. So I'll actually show you, you can run this in edit mode and it'll, you'll see the effect in real time. I'll sort of just zoom in here so it's a little bit easier to see the effect. So you got these different resolution uh, projectiles, arrows, whatever. And so I'm going to run in edit mode and hit pixel snapping and you see some things were not snapped perfectly now make sure that they do snap and but there's no change in the resolution scale you want those nice chunky pixels so for that you just hit upscale render texture and there you go you got these nice you got a nice chunky pixely pixely good result um but there's some issues here kind of hidden uh if you look really closely you'll start to see them and i'll talk about how to deal with these in a second but that's basically all you have to do. You can run this in edit mode just to see the result. Make sure that uh, it's on, turned on when you hit play mode, and it'll just do its thing. All right, talking about assets here and some rules of thumb. Uh, here's the basic rules of thumb. I'm just going to look at a uh, test asset here. So the very first basic rule of thumb is uh, when you create the pixel art itself, Avoid having any sort of um, transparency, uh, alpha channel. Make sure there's just nothing but solid blocks of, of colored pixels. Um, if there's transparency, make sure it's completely transparent because otherwise you're going to end up with these, these fuzzy sort of in-between pixels that get rendered differently depending on you know how it looks in the game. So you're going to want to make sure of that. No fuzziness, so make sure you're not um, doing much or you know too much anti-aliasing to sort of fuzz up the edges or anything like that. Uh, color palettes, I find, don't really matter too much as long as you don't go crazy with the anti-aliasing. Um, and the other thing is just keep it at the scale that you intend it to be in the game. You know, so if it's a 32 by 32 intended sort of image then keep it at that resolution. Don't upscale it and, and make it double the, the scale. Um, uh, except maybe I'll show you an example with uh, projectiles. It might be worth doing this. But for the most part, just keep your pixel art, you know, one time scale. Don't try to upscale it. Um, and that's about it for the uh, on the art side of things. When you import it into Unity, here's the basic settings you want to keep in mind. So for this image, I said 10 pixel per unit is the default that's true I was doing some testing here so I would go with 10 as the default uh, definitely make sure that you're on filter mode filter mode point uh, that'll just make sure everything's nice and clean there's no none of that fuzziness and turn off compression it has no real bearing on this you're using really small assets it doesn't really add any value if anything it could mess up your pixel art you can change your pixels the way you intended them to be 
And that's pretty much it for your basic default settings when you import your asset uh, sprite into Unity. Okay, well now I talked about this special case scenario where you want to hire a pixel per unit setting maybe in some cases. Well, if you're rotating your object, I find that it's better to have a higher pixel per unit setting. And I'm not entirely sure why, but after a lot of testing I found that the, the best setting was in multiples of 30. So 30, 60, 90, 120. I think pretty much 30 and 90 was the ones that I settled on the most. Some cases maybe 120. But basically you get these weird artifacts if you don't do that. Um, maybe it has something to do with the output resolution being at a 3 to 1 ratio. 640 uh, by 360 was my intended base resolution that then gets upscaled to 1080p. So yeah, it's 3 to 1 ratio. Maybe it has something to do with that. I don't know, but this is what I found nonetheless. So if you take these images right here, um, this one, this is 80 PPU, and this one is 90 PPU. And if you rotate this, well, actually, I'll put it back to its normal rotation, and... And it might be a little hard to notice some lack of uniformity between these two. In the 80 PPU, you might see a little bit of a difference here with... It's not quite uniform here. It's not quite symmetric. You see the blocks aren't quite the same on this side as it is on here, but here we have symmetry. If I take off the pixel effect, and I don't run in edit mode, yeah, it'll be even more pronounced. You see this really doesn't look very nice. Uh, garbled line here, whereas this nice sym symmetric and clean, clean lines that are symmetric in all, in all quadrants of this image. And if you use a higher PPU like, like this, uh, you're going to want to scale up the image to make sure it's the right size when you have a larger PPU setting for the image. Uh, here, here I have some examples. I'll turn off the uh, pixel setting here. And here's a uh, 32 by 32 scale. This is with, again, with the uh, pixel snapping off and the resolution downscaling off. And this is three times scale at 30 PPU, four and a half scale at 45 PPU, nine times scale, 90 PPU, and 12 times scale, 120 PPU. Now, the main reason you do this that I found it would be for assets that you're going to end up rotating. So going back to the turning on the pixel snapping and downscaling with the resolution, again I'll zoom in to make this a little bit more clear, is if I take the uh, one time scale 10 PPU uh, projectile here, this arrow, and I'm rotating it, you can see that there's all these little spokes and sort of ugly edges. It doesn't look very nice. Um, if we scale it up three times but make it 30 PPU, then, well, you get a few less of those ugly edges, but still doesn't quite look optimum. See, like that little edge there with that little stray pixel? Um, this is not a huge difference. It's going to be more of the same. Maybe even worse because it's 45 PPU. It's not at that nice 30, 90, 120 multiples of 30 that we talked about earlier. Now, this is three times 90 PPU. And now we can see it's a lot nicer. The edges, everything's a lot cleaner. There's almost no random spoky little things popping out. And it might be a little overkill, but this is 12 times 120 PPU. And it's maybe even a little bit cleaner. Maybe even a little nicer. Now, it's worth pointing out that these are such small objects um, with so little colors and their PNG files that there's not a really big difference in file size between these higher and lower scaled. So if you look at the different scalings here, this is the one time scale, I think that's three times, nine times, and 12 times. And I'm not just scaling them, I'm actually adding pixel data. As you can see, there's a lot more pixels filling it out. So don't just scale it and have these big chunky pixels. Definitely fill in that information. That will help uh, smooth out the um, when it gets downscaled, the end result.
but yeah, basically the file sizes are the same from the 12 time scaled to the once time scaled such there, because there's so little information in these PNG files, they're basically just two kilobytes each. So you're not really going to be bloating your memory usage or anything like that. So definitely something to, to consider doing, especially with projectiles, um, or rotating objects. Uh, anything that might have an unclean result when it's downscaled, consider doing this upscaling. I should also mention before we move away from this that there's also a couple other things to keep in mind. Make sure that you definitely make sure you have your max size here larger than your actual size of your your image, or else you get these weird blurry results. Um, you know, like if you have a really large image, I mean for pixel art, in most cases, this is the default setting of 2048 is going to be just fine. But just make sure of that. And again, for rotating, it might be more beneficial to set your rotation point as a, uh, instead of centered on a um, non-pixel value, is to set it to custom. Actually, go to Sprite Editor and go to Custom Pixels. And now you can set your pixel coordinate where it's rotating to make it just a little bit, um, might make your rotation a little cleaner. All right, so since we, after we did all that, or right here we got this ship here, just really quickly, I should fix that. It's a case in point of this issue here. Um, this is normally a higher resolution image, you see here, and it's just getting downscaled. So this has been blown up, scaled up, and just like those other projectiles, they were scaled up, but the PPU is not set to a nice PPU. So you get these sort of unsymmetric pixels here, and it's just not very nice, so... Let's set that to the correct nearest PPU that we decided upon here. Yeah, it's at 40. So we decided what, 30 or 60 or 90. So let's say 30. There you go. Now everything nicely is symmetric again. We might have to now worry about scaling it in, the, in your image editor if it's not now the right size, but whatever, just to show that that's now scaled nicely. So I'll just remove those images. We don't need to consider them anymore. Just going to be looking at projectiles and how to um, deal with them uh, optimally using this setup. So I just got this little uh, pattern here set up in Varia Bullet 2D. And I'll change the bullet being used here. And I'll take off a setting here just to just demonstrate this. So... All right, so that now we're using the pixel perfect uh, camera component on this, and in these high res bullets, it's now downscaling them and snapping them to the grid. So just to prove this, I'm going to zoom in, and sure enough, all those bullets are nicely snapped onto uh, this background grid here. Everything looks nice, clean, crisp, you know, pixel perfect, right? But you'll notice that there's this sort of jerkiness, this stepping sort of quality to the bullets. This is actually, believe it or not, this is how bullets would look in a retro game. So it's kind of funny because, you know, when you play all those old retro 16-bit games, you don't really notice anything like this. Well, why is that? Well, the reason why is because they use all these visual tricks to sort of fool your brain into not seeing the jerky stepping motion. But it's, of course, there because everything's snapping on a pixel grid. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some uh, updates I put into Variable, I guess, version 1.06 to help handle some of these when dealing with bullets, uh, projectiles of any kind, uh, especially these kinds of bullet hell patterns and even lasers. So... All right, so to smooth out the stepping effect, I found that really the best way to do this is to give some sort of dynamic sort of animation or pseudo animation to your to the to the projectiles themselves. This is how it's handled when you use when you play these old school bullet hell games. So you can do that with either animation frames, actually having different frames uh, for your bullets, so they they're animating. Um, Shifting the colors can help. Uh, there's the color shift setting in Variable It that lets you do this nice and easily. And there's a new setting to ho to sort of make this more of a stepped effect. Um, so you don't even have to use bright frames. 
You can use rotation, and on some bullets that looks nice, and some you get these little those little spokes that you don't really want. Uh, maybe unless you go to a higher resolution, but you have to of course experiment with that. Um, but it can be sort of, uh, but it can be hit or miss. And another new feature in Vari Bullet is scaling. So I think scaling will demonstrate this difference quite well. So I'm going to go back to the settings here. I've already got sprite frames, so that's helping already, uh, smoothing that out. And I've already got some scale settings here and some color shift settings. So I'm just going to turn on scaling. It's going to scale from, you know, just 0.8 to 1, not a whole lot. There you go. It pretty much mostly removes the, the stepping effect. Um, of course, if I used more dynamic frames of animation and sort of change the, the size and the effect of the bullets, uh, it would have an even more smoothing, you'd have even a greater smoothing effect. So there you go. That one little thing makes a big difference. Um, in most cases with a lot of these older bullet hell games, they just had multiple frames, two or three. That's all you need in most cases. And it'll do, it'll smooth it out nicely. Oh, and also worth mentioning, another thing in Variable at 1.06 is uh, step shift. This basically just makes sure that the color shifts on a frame and not, not as gradually. There you go, from purple to blue to pink to purple to... All right, so that's how to get a nice pixel-perfect snapping, downscaled, you know, chunky projectiles for your bullet hell game or your non-bullet hell game. That's bullets, basically, right there and, and other game objects. Lasers are a little bit different and uh, in variable bullets, so you might also notice this if you made your own lasers, but if you're using variable bullets lasers, I've updated it so it can handle this better. All right, so here we go, checking out lasers, and everything looks pretty good with our laser here until we rotate it. Then we start noticing, oh, what is this? All these, all these ugly little gaps that have shown up. That's not good. So, so if you want to have a pixel perfect setup in Variable at 2D, in Unity, uh, I would recommend using super lasers and you can adjust your, you can adjust the overlap of the uh, different chunks and sections of the laser. So there's the, for the front and the tip and the mid chunks. Um, now in version 1.06, I've added the ability to adjust uh, the overlap, either extend the gaps for whatever reason if you want to, um, which wouldn't be good here for Pixel Perfect, or uh, or overlap the chunks so that you don't get those gaps. So in this case, I'm just going to minus one. I found was the was the good value for that. Now when I rotate the laser, looks great. No gaps at all. Just to show you what this is all about, I'm going to turn off that laser. I'm going to make it a gap of one and turn on laser again. There you go. You got these gaps in the mid chunks. So again, it sort of breaks the illusion of this singular laser object. So that's all you have to do. Just close those gaps with uh, super lasers in version 1.06 and it'll be all set up for pixel perfect. Now the only other thing that might be worth mentioning is when you do rotate, like if you have an automator, for example, here, I'll just set that up here really quickly, a linear automator, um, ping pong, pitch, uh, let's just say zero to 30, fast enough it kind of looks a little bit I mean it is pixel perfect but it kind of looks a little artificial so yeah that looks pretty artificial it looks maybe a little bit artificial so um, in some cases you can obviously make it a slower laser that might paper over that effect if you're rotating your lasers this is of course the only only reason I'm talking about this is if you're rotating them which isn't 
too common. But if you do that, you can um, either deal with this, just live with it the way it, or it might be better to step through as an increment the uh, increment by a set increment, like 5, 10, or something like that, instead of just sort of smoothly. So we can just go, say, increments of 10, or maybe 5 is better. So let's just go... Oops, let's go 6. I'm sorry. <laughs> Screw up here. Okay, so 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. All right. Oh, and set it to pitch, I guess, in this case. Yeah, that's too slow. So let's. Now, this might look a little bit more pixel art like, maybe, although you could still probably make those increments a little bit shorter. But you have to be careful when doing this because your uh, the object that it looks to be hitting might actually end up be in the between spot. And that won't be good because it won't actually hit the object. It'll just sort of, it'll look like it's passing through it, basically. So anyways, I, this is more for you to figure out how you want to approach this. This is sort of one way to look at it. You can make these increments really small. You don't have to, of course, use the automator. You can write your own script to really uh, simply just change the, the pitch or the rotation of the laser, however you wish. But I'm just putting this out there so that you make it a little bit more nicer and smooth it out. So yeah, if you want to get a nice pixel perfect game in Unity, you can definitely do that now with the uh, pixel perfect component. And if you have projectiles, I would highly recommend, although I'm pretty biased, I guess, uh, that you pick up variable at 2D. It would help me out a lot. And uh, I think it's a pretty good asset for either modern shmups, retro shmups, non shmups. There's a lot of 2D game styles that use projectiles. So Hopefully this advice was helpful to you, and if you do choose to support me, I'd really appreciate it, and yeah, thanks for watching.